TED Talk, I stumbled in a couple of their educational videos and for the most part, I liked them, but why in the name of God they have this one with the comments and ratings disabled? I'm not saying that you're not allowed to be that way, I'm just saying that it's a terrible warning sign that some of the ideas being spread here are ideas that shouldn't be challenged or else you're a terrible human being or something. Sorry, but that's not how ideas work, Ted. If these ideas go unchallenged, you're gonna have people who think that doing this is a good idea. The what? what is your little it's uh, Pepe's become kind of a symbol. Seriously. Stop. Richard Spencer is a dick, but you sucker punching him because he's a Nazi only translate you sucker punching him because it feels good. Well, it feels good punching a Nazi in the face, does it? How about you put all of those efforts on punching him by challenging his ideas? No? It's too hard or too boring? You don't have any reasonable capacity of a brain to actually do that? Well, so you just want to punch people because it feels good. Well, congratulations. Glad that you find your passion. Jesus Christ, it's only a matter of time before these people turn into mass shooters. Anyway, Ted, I'm not that kind of person. I'm not gonna punch people out just because I feel like it. I'm gonna use my speech and my brains because that's what I'm better at, and I'd be better off putting my killing spree on monsters in video games. Ashley Judd, stupid fucking slut. Oh, jeez. You can't sue someone for calling them a cunt. If you can't handle the internet, fuck off, whore. That's a harsh language of that particular statement, so let me make it nicer. If you cannot handle someone calling you bad words on the internet, then you should leave. The language is sure harsh, but it's a good advice to take. And I'm being serious about that. This is a thing that happens even without the internet. The internet is merely a medium to bolster those kinds of mean words. It makes it easier for people to say mean things to people you don't like. You know, like the son of someone you don't like. Online misogyny is a global gender rights tragedy, and it is imperative that it ends. <laughs> Ashley, your feelings do not even qualify as a human right, let alone a women's right. That is unless you want to be treated like a toddler. Damn it, Billy, you make baby Ashley cry again. You should be ashamed of yourself, okay? In fact, go kill yourself, Billy. You freaking internet troll. God damn. Baby Ashley is sensitive, okay? She's sensitive to mean words that you say to her. That sounds freaking terrible, right? You don't want to be treated like a toddler, right? And whose fault is that? Whose fault that people are treating you like a freaking toddler? Well, you. You for asking people to treat you like a freaking toddler. I mean, if you insist. <laughs> well, looks like America is being populated by a bunch of toddlers. No wonder why these people riot on the streets and they even do weird things like... I don't, I, I don't even know at this point. Girls and women's voices and our allies' voices are constrained in ways that are personally, economically, professionally, and politically damaged. And when we curb abuse, we will expand freedom. Your definition of abuse is people saying mean words to you. My only interpretation of you saying that is if we censor people saying mean words on the internet, we will achieve freedom. This video is 16 minutes and she spent a lot of her time describing how terrible her trolls are. All right, Ashley, all right, I get it, I get it. But then, in the 11 minute mark, she says, Enough excuses. Only when women have critical mass in every department at your companies, including building platforms from the ground up, will the conversations about priorities and solutions change. And more love for my friends in tech, profiteering off misogyny and video games must end. Ashley, fictional sexy characters are not the same as real life women. They do not suffer from misogyny just because you feel offended by it. I play the latest Dead or Alive, it's a very fun game. I get the chance to beat the living crap out of guys too. So 
it's a misandrous game, right? No, because <laughs> there's no such thing as sexism towards men, right? I'm so tired of hearing you talk to me at cocktail parties like you did a couple weeks ago in Aspen about how deplorable hashtag Gamergate was when you're still making billions of dollars off games that maim and dump women for sport. Basta, as the Italians would say. Enough. What the hell, Ashley? <laughs> what the hell? Let's just ignore Gamergate for a second. Video games that dump women for sports? Are you aware of how many bodies of men that people play around with in games like Hitman or Deus Ex? You're only triggered when women gets the hit, aren't you? Let's just get straight to the point. Ashley, let's just get straight into the solution, okay? How can we combat this terrifying online misogyny? So apparently, I've got a pretty bold voice. So let's talk about our friends. White men. You have a role to play and a choice to make. You can do something, or you can do nothing. Okay, Ashley, can you please tell us, white men, what to do to combat this misogyny? I know I'm not white, but I might have contributed into this dangerous culture, and I want to help such a poor soul like you. We need to grow support lines and help groups so victims can help each other when their lives and finances have been derailed. We must, as individuals, disrupt gender violence as it is happening. 92% of young people, 29 and under, witness it. 72% of us have witnessed it. We must have the courage and urgency to practice stopping it as it is unfolding. Um, okay. First of all, there's a support group called Crash Override Network by Gamergate victim Zoe Quinn, who turns out to be harassing people left and right. The anti-Trump protest recently has a woman getting her hair burned and a reporter from Rebel Media getting punched in the face while the feminists are cheering love Trump's hate. The riots are so incredibly ironic they destroyed a limo owned by a Muslim immigrant. The violence is so massive to the point of friendly fire. My point is that people like you have tried all of those things and failed miserably and I can tell you why. Because people like you don't care about an inch of actually fighting for the misogyny of women. You only care about fighting for yourself and your own personal feelings and your own personal misogynistic insults that you receive from the internet. You want your feelings to be protected and only your feelings. You claim that you're fighting for women, but in the end, you're all fighting for yourself. You try so desperately to survive into this world, you use all the available platforms to deceive the world that you're a victim even though people have suffered worse than you. And these people who suffered worse than you, they actually have to work their hard ass off to get out, which is why they suffer more than you. But you, you have to beg. You have to ask people to fight your battle while they are way too busy fighting their own. That's how I see this entire thing. This person is begging for help to fight her own battles instead of actually fighting. This person is incapable of fighting these trolls on her own. So she asked for help. And it couldn't be more apparent other than her final request. And lastly, believe her. Believe her. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. You proved every point that I say. That shows to me that you're desperate. You have no argument left. You have nothing more to say other than please believe everything that I say. You have a fight that you know very well that you lose. So you ask for people to help on fighting it for you so that you can gain free sympathy and they do the battle themselves. And your argument to this entire thing is, please believe me. I'm done ranting. Move on, please. And as I believe that human interaction is at the core of our healing, trauma not transformed will be trauma transferred. Edith Wharton said the end is latent in the beginning, so we are going to end this talk replacing hate speech with love speech. Because I get lonely in this, but I know that we are allies. Oh, you mean like this? I hate Minecraft. I hate superhero movies. I hate Beyonce. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on there, friend. Don't you think that petty contrarianism and half-baked cynicism are a poor substitute for the genuine thoughtfulness that I know you're capable of? Perhaps you should consider defining yourself by what you like rather than what you hate. Hmm. Well, 
I like Donald Trump. No. If you do something wrong, I will not comfort you with kindness. I will criticize you. If it hurts your feelings, well, tough luck. Do you have anything else? I recently learned about how gratitude and affirmations offset negative interactions. It takes five of those to offset one negative interaction. And gratitude in particular, free, available globally, anytime, anywhere, to anyone in any dialect. It fires the pregenual anterior singlet, a watershed part of the brain that floods it with great good stuff. So say good things to you because you asked for it. What? So I'm going to say awesome stuff about myself. I would like for you to reflect it back to me. It might sound something like this. I am a powerful and strong woman. And you would say, yes, you are. Yes, you are. My mama loves me. Yes, she does. I did a great job with my talk. Yes, you did. I have a right to be here. Yes, you do. I'm really cute. Yes, <laughs> this is both creepy and pathetic. Do you see my point now? People, please tell me that I'm a good person. Please tell me that I do very well. Please tell me that my opinions are not garbage and I'm not garbage for saying it. This is what they call an echo chamber, guys. This is what they call burying their head in the sand. Sounds disturbing, isn't it? It sounds both disturbing and pathetic at the same time. It reeks of childish desperation. These people really want to be treated like toddlers, aren't they? Ma'am. You're not a toddler. You're an adult. These people say mean things to you on the internet. Either you grow up and stop whining because that will happen to you in real life as well. Or maybe check up and see if there's something wrong with you. You don't have to blame it on everything, ma'am. It might be just you're the real problem, but you refuse to admit it. And after seeing clips like this... I'm nasty! Like my blood stains on my bed sheets we don't actually choose! <laughs> I have absolutely no more doubts. That's all for the video today. If you like this, you can go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for more if you wish. You can support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching.